We believe in church government, and the government is the order of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. The pastor is always the head of the church. The pastor is always. That's God's elder. In organizations, you have to come to the bishop. Now, the Bible, there's no higher order in the Bible than the elder of the church. Just tell me where it's at. There's no higher order in the Bible for the church than the elder, which is the pastor. He's the highest order of the Bible. Now, if there's anything wrong in the church that you ever know of, some individual or some person or anything, you are duty-bound and will answer before God if you don't clear that thing out. You, the church. Now, you remember, it's not on my shoulders, it's on yours. And anything wrong in the church, God will make you answer for it. That's right. That's the way He runs His church. That's the way it is in the Bible. That's the order of the Bible. That's the sovereignty of the local church. The pastor is ahead. That's right. Amen. Now, coming to this blessed old message here, you, I, I want you to know that this is tape recorded, remember, this message, and the tape recordings of the church, the orders and rules of the church. It's on tape recording. That's according to the Bible. We don't run it to nobody in the head, no, all, we're all the same. But we got a leader. That is the pastor, as long as he's led by the Holy Ghost. True. All right. And now, to the pastor, to our brother Neville at this time, remember, he is the full head of the church. Brother Neville has a right to exercise any authority that the Holy Spirit would Anything the Holy Spirit would tell him to say, in other words, in the church, he has a right to anything that God would lead him to do. He also has a right over his deacon board. He can change the deacon board, the trustees, or, or pianist, or any other office in the church that he desires to change, feeling led by the Holy Spirit uh, to do so. And whatever he does, I'll recognize it as he, I believe, to be a godly man. I'll recognize it to be of the Lord and will sanction the same. Therefore, it gives him the authority then to operate the church the way he feels led to do it. Now, or any office in the church that he desires to, to, to uh, switch uh, positions with people, well, uh, he has the uh, authority to do that, which I trust that this will always be lovely and never have to be used. And then I have here also some something for the bulletin board this morning about the meeting of the boards and their authority. And it'll be on the bulletin board, and I got a copy for Brother Roberson, who is the chairman of the, D, of the trustees, and then I got a copy for Brother Collins, I think, who acts as the chairman of the deacon board. And now all these offices are set according to the Scripture, and they must have the scriptural rules of what they must do. Therefore, the trustees has an office of their own, and the deacons has an office of their own. The Sunday school superintendent has an office of his own. And the pastor is the head of the flock. And I like that, see, because I believe it's apostolic. Because uh, the head, the highest order in the church is the shepherd. We realize that, the pastor. And, uh, and if, the, uh, the, if some bishop or somebody else is going to knock the revelation out of the pastor, then how is the God going to ever work in his church? You, see, yeah. you just can't get it. That's the second question on this uh, slip of paper that I have here, which is a little card. Now, this would be uh, pertaining to the pastor here, see, because 
he, after all, over the spiritual part, he's the head of that. Deacons are policemen in the church to keep order and to take care of these things and feeding the poor and so forth. The trustees are over the finance in the building. That's what they are to look after. But the pastor is over the, the supervising of the spiritual part. And this would go to you, Brother Neville. 